Celtic take on Feyenoord tomorrow night in match day six of this season's Champions League. And it's one I've got to be honest with you. I'm finding it hard, certainly at this moment in time, to get too excited about it. However, I'm joined here by Paddy, who I'm sure will bring some optimism and get his buzzing for the game. Paddy, welcome to the, the show. How are you feeling about this one tomorrow night? Yeah, obviously a, a dead rubber of a game. Um, I feel that after the result on, on Sunday, um, we, we do need to go in here and try and get a result. Um, and a team we, who we, sh we should be challenging, in my opinion, um, we don't really seem to have the, the confidence around our, our, our squad at the moment, but I generally feel that if you, you, know, you go in and, and try and set the mood right, this is the kind of game you do that. I think uh, we've seen a couple of years ago, the game against Real Betis at Celtic Park, which we won 3-2. Um, the squad was was um, sprinkled with a lot of uh, a lot of our, our younger players um, and a lot of bit part players that were, you know, trying to make a point. I think this season we've already kind of seen a lot of our bit part players trying to come in and do that already. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if we see uh, some big rotations, considering there's still quite a number of games to play this month. Um, but a good opportunity for those that um, are maybe wanting to prove a point uh, to try and come in and, and, and stake a claim for getting into the match day squad or even getting into the starting 11. Uh, I would be going, for example, um, to try and, and, and you know, even look at what, what's Lagerbielka got to offer um, second time round against Feyenoord. Um, I don't think I would be keeping it too much the same. I think this is a game where I we are allowed to go and change things up. But then there is also the other side that we've not, we've not won in the Champions League in, in a long time and we've certainly not won at home in the Champions League in, a, in an even longer time. So a few things for Rodgers to think about, but I, I generally think that, you know, you try and build a bit of a momentum from here um, and I think we're crying out for that at the moment. We really are. Do you know, i seen something last night. <clears throat> a friend sent me a graphic showing that the games we've played this season, we've played something like, I think it's 23 games, there or thereabouts, and it shows you the the one-draw losses, you know, for each of the game. Celtic haven't, I'll, I'll double-check this, but I'm sure it's right, Celtic haven't strung together three wins in a row at any point this season. I think that's such a damning stat, and I didn't realise that, and you know, I'm not pressing the panic button just yet, but I'm, I'm hovering over it, I'm near it, um, because... Sunday at Kamalik was such a wake-up call, such a, such a, I don't know if shock's too strong a word. I, some people say, you know, they've seen a result like this coming, but I didn't see that second half collapse coming. I thought it was as as bad a second half or a, ba a bad a half of football I've seen from Celtic in a, a long, long time. And that goes back to some of the COVID season nonsense and, and beyond that. Um, but you, you used the word there, Paddy, consistency, and that's absolutely what we need. You know, we need to pull together a, a run of wins and just get into that routine of just routinely taking care of business, getting the job done, putting in 90 minute performances instead of 45 minute performances and then kicking on. I said to Miff and Joe last night on the weekly show, inconsistent starting 11s give you inconsistent results. That's the bottom line. We've obviously got the problem in the midfield. We don't know who this third man's going to be beyond McGregor and O'Reilly. It's a water for now, but does that remain the case? Kyogo's off for him. Carter Vickers is in and out. Joe Hart seems to be short of confidence. Greg Taylor's gone back the way. Lots of stuff at play there, Paddy, but you're right, we need to find consistency at some point, in some point very soon. I think so, I think so. Um, I watched Greg Taylor take a touch the other day, which could only be described by that of an elephant. It went right back into the middle of the park and I thought to myself, you're on the best part of about 10, 10 12,000 pounds a week. Like To be at that level and be at that mindset that you're, you're not good enough, um, is more damning in itself and, and making touches like that in the middle of the park. And then his uh, his role in the in the second goal, I, I mean, he, he brought the ball out of defence, played the pass and stood there and decided, I'm going to wait and see what happens. And then just been totally caught out, been totally caught out, very, very poor. Um, the, the mindset at the moment has been that, do you know what, we can maybe just ride on this wave at the moment and see how things go. And I'm including Cameron Carter Vickers in it in the sense of, yes, there's been the, the injury worries, and yes, we are probably still waiting for him to get back up to a proper match uh, fitness that we, we, we know and love. 
from Carter Vickers, but it doesn't help when he's in and out of the team. I think it's now, at this point, if you want to go and start pulling away and getting that lead away in the league again, everyone needs to roll up their sleeves. Every single player needs to stand up and be counted. And listen, this is not a great squad at the moment. It's not a great starting eleven. But for me, it's still a better starting eleven than any other team in the country. So that for me, there's still no excuse. Yeah. I think Joe Hart, yes, has been shocking, but it's very likely that he's going to be the goalkeeper at the end of the season. I would much happy. I would be happy to bring in a goalkeeper in January, but he's going to be a goalkeeper. So you back him. You need to make sure that he's got his com- the confidence in the players in front of him. That back line has changed far too much this season. So you, need, you then need to make the call. As much as we've been happy for Liam Scales to go and prove some doubters wrong, including myself, and, and have a, a run of consistency, for me, is not the answer. He's not going to get better than what he's at. So therefore... If you're going to go for this league and you want to try and make sure that we are building that consistency that we're talking about, it needs to be one of the new centre halves that we've signed this season. It needs to be. Nat Phillips has gone back in January and happily so. So we need to get this settled team now and we need to do it before the winter break. Let them familiarise themselves before they go off for that two-week period. Because I tell you, for me, middle going forward, as much as we're talking about the Kyogo factor, I think Kyogo's missing someone that can unlock defences like Katai. I think at the moment we are missing that for him. But for me, the biggest issue is our back five. That's our biggest problem at the moment. They're not working well together at all. Yeah. I mentioned to the boys uh, last night the fact that a lot of Celtic's success the last two years under Ange was built on the foundation of Carmen Cattlevickers and Carl Starfelt, the much maligned Carl Starfelt and all that kind of stuff. But their numbers just don't lie. They were so consistent. And between those two and Joe Hart, that 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 trio was was ever present, and Celtic the benefits because it allowed the foundations, it built a platform for the rest of the team, the front six or whatever you want to call it, to go and do their thing. And there's no doubt that yes, there's individuals not playing well, but it doesn't help anybody. And I would say Joe Hart included. When every other week he's got a different centre half yep. pairing or a potential different fullback with Ralston and Taylor, uh, Ralston and uh, Johnson coming in and out a wee bit. Greg Taylor's been ever present, but playing so poorly, you know, really selling himself short. Greg Taylor's better than what Greg Taylor's offering. Again, it's not it's not a it's not a vendetta against Greg Taylor, but he's got more to offer than he than he's shown at this moment in time. And that inconsistency is just it's now breeding throughout the team, and we really do need to kind of you know find a a settled lineup and, and kick on for there. I was going to say as well. I mean, obviously, I've, you know, build this as a dead rubber as as have most other people. There's obviously a couple of things to play for, um, you know, on paper at least in terms of trying to improve the coefficient, yeah. trying to get this elusive group stage one, you know, that stat keeps hovering around and it's, it's not a good look for Celtic. There's the finances and, and a lot of fans are a bit frustrated at that because if you get a win, I think you get somewhere in the region of €2 million Euro for a win, but will Celtic spend it is the other question. So there are things to play for being realistic, but what, what about the players, Paddy? What, what will motivate the players getting into this one? So I've seen a lot of people questioning whether or not they're, they're buying into the system, um, whether or not they're buying into the manager. And and I think, for me, we need to take a wee step back, in my opinion, and look at the fact that that was our first defeat this season in the league. Yes, the performances haven't been to the standard that we're, we're, we're used to watching. It's, it's a weaker Celtic team than it is last season. I think that's a given. But... I think that then even speaks more of the character of those that are really, really trying for this team. I look at Matt O'Reilly. Um, I, I look at Kyogo Furahashi. I think that he's he's one of the best players I've seen at Celtic in a long time. He's cutting a very frustrated figure out there, but it doesn't for me, it doesn't mean he's not trying. I just think that yeah. we have so much injuries. We've had so many like issues with uh, suspensions in Europe. We've had so many different starting elevens this season. It's just not been that consistent lineup, And I think that you kind of need to give them the benefit of the doubt in that sense. I really do. I think once things are a bit more settled, it's a bit less frantic for us. This team is more than capable of kicking on. And I think they know that too. I think they know that too. I don't think any of them are shirking away from, from the performance at Sunday at all. Um, it's it's a difficult one. We, we see... We see the progress going backwards uh, in terms of who we lost in the summer and then in terms of the quality that we brought in. 
I don't think there was many at the end of that window saying that we were we were looking stronger. I think there was many saying, right, we've replaced what we needed to replace. Where have we enhanced? And I don't think we enhanced at all. There's not one player that's that stood out for me. Yeah, and you know, and the, yeah, and the, and the one name that comes up potentially during that discussion is Leigh Palmer, but even he's well out of sorts. He's he's shown in more than flashes. He's shown you know at decent times that he's got actually quite a lot to offer. He's got some real quality on the ball, hasn't he? He's got a strike on goal. He's got an assist. He's got some creativity. But when you need these guys, you know, when the chips are there, you always talk about who do you want in the trenches with you when you're up against it. When you when you are at Rugby Park and it, it goes one each or it goes two one, who's the who's the guys that are going to take it with the scruff of the neck and, and pull you through? The Bruni type characters, and it doesn't have to be all snarling and aggression. But who's the leaders? Who's going to stand up? We miss Kat Vickers badly in those situations. Callum McGregor and Joe Hart are your most senior operators, and both are having a mixed time. It's fair to say, and I just think, I mean, Joe made the point that. Tactics and formations and styles and, and strategies are all well and good, but if the desire and the work rate and the commitment and the effort and all the all the basics, all the all the things that should be given for a footballer, if they aren't there, or at least if you can't match your opposition, I mean, come on, we're more motivated in that second half than us, and that is unacceptable. That's yeah. a lot of that comes down to the manager, but I also think, you know, for playing the blame game, that the players themselves need to look a bit closer to home. Even if you disagree with the manager, if you're not sure of his style, and, and I'm not convinced the players haven't bought into it, but just, just say for talking sake, the players or some of them haven't bought into what Brendan Rodgers is trying to do, still no excuse for not giving your absolute all because you're playing for Celtic, not for the manager, you're playing for Celtic and you're playing for yourself and you're handsomely paid to do so, which is just part of, you know, top level football. And the players owe it to... Certainly themselves, but also the fans on Wednesday night. Whatever the starting eleven is, a response is required. And I also think that you don't want another Champions League loss in your record. But if Celtic were to lose against Feyenoord, but put in a far better performance and a bit more of a determined performance, I think most fans would accept that. But you just don't know, Paddy, from one game to the next, what we're going to get. You don't. And and that is the... This is the worry that I I have at the moment with this this team. I, I, I can see the... The point that uh, Joe's trying to make in terms of the players, I think that no one is is walking out of this. Um, no one is walking out of this with with a, a fault, with a, a part of, of blame, in my opinion. Um, but what I just kind of go back to what I just said there as well. We're, we're, we we recognised pretty quickly that the team wasn't really firing all cylinders under the Lennon season, and I think that some people are saying they've been waiting in this performance. But actually, yeah, there's been some really really poor performances down to his missing players, down to the squad rotation that's happening. And we've actually grinded the result out, I think, in Motherwell. Um, the, the game at Fur Park with Matt O'Reilly scoring uh, at the death. That hunger's there. Um, we just need to see all all 11 players go for it. What I still think you're finding, and, and we, you say 23 games in, still not an awful lot for a new player to re- really, really find their feet and understand what the rest of their, their, their teammates are up to. I've seen so many times with Louis Palmer, the frustration that he's not got a left-back powering in behind him that he can slip in for a cross and yeah. a pass. He cuts, again, he cuts another frustrated figure that he's, he's looking at, who have I got coming in behind me here? He likes to cut in. He likes to try and play that killer pass. But he's attempting it too much because he's just not got anyone in the overlap for him. Yeah. At the moment... A lot of people are starting to kind of worry about Alistair Johnson's performances as well. But then I look at who's he had in front of him for the last yeah. for the last five weeks. I think he's a very safe player, Johnston. Yeah. He needs that rhythm. He needs that understanding of the players in front of him. And then we look at a midfield that's not been settled enough. Uh, Tumble's been in and out. Bernardo's been in and out. And now we see a Wata getting tried. And we speak about how quick we are bringing the ball out from the back. It's not quick enough, but then again, who is creating the options? Who's moving for them? I think every game I've seen with Bernardo and with Turnbull is that they, they just go into a pocket and it's very, very easy for the opposition just to close close the angle. Too yeah. too easy and it's, it's, it's got, the option's gone straight away. So there are players that are definitely, they, they need to up their game. I think those that are really trying to push to get into this team, they're the ones for me that should be on the heels of every start eleven player that's in that team, um, but there's also big players that are 
playing week in, week out, they really need to start carrying them. And I include their captain in that. I really do. I think this is a, this is a massive moment for the team. Um, probably a wake-up call at a good time in terms of there's still a lot for us to play at. Um, for the rest of the season and we're coming into a, a very busy running an important running to this winter break as well Yeah and you know that's it's a positive way to look at it in terms of Sunday not great at all but you're better getting the wake up call just now December than dropping these points in March, April, May when it, when it could be really crucial to what you're doing um, you, you mentioned the midfield amongst other things there and I, I, I just like I'd like to see Iwata given an extended run I yeah. think, as you say, Bernardo's had the chance, Turnbull's had the chance, uh, Thiago Holmes had the chance. I, I think, in my opinion, Awata's the best of the lot in terms of what he can offer, generally speaking, and also allowing McGregor further up. Let's give him that run for four, five, six games. Let's not go Awata for two, then we'll go back to Turnbull and we'll try Bernardo in Europe again. Let's just give somebody a run and try and get that consistency. And I think it's a really valid point about sometimes players are only as good as the the teammate next to him, i.e. Louis Palmer's suffering because Greg Taylor's suffering, Alistair Johnson's suffering because he doesn't know if it's Mikey Johnson or Yang or James Forrest that's up ahead of him, who are all very inconsistent at this moment in time. About that, you just three players that are in and out of the team for the last six weeks. There is just not a settled start at 11. This is the yeah. biggest issue at the moment. Yeah, and I think we've spoken before, haven't we, about partnerships all across the park at any level of football. Uh, are where you get your successes and you get your consistency and, and you can see that that link up you know continue to happen we don't have it at this moment in time and as i say inconsistent teams inconsistent results paddy we'll take a look at the the lineup um i'll be amazed if the two is can manage to to nail this because i i've just no idea what he's going to do miff thinks he's going to uh, play pretty strong miff doesn't think there'll be many changes to the lineup you've mentioned that you think there might be a bit of rotation so let's start at the back it's it's obviously going to be joe hart Seagrest isn't even in the Champions League squad, so there would be no question of him playing. The other option is Scott Bain. I don't think he's going to feature. So Joe Hart will be in goals. And then across the back four, you've got further issues in the fact that Navrocki, your most expensive summer signing, is also not in the squad. Burnaby, your only alternative at left back, isn't in the squad. So so what do you do? You know, If you wanted to freshen it up, your, your options are limited. But do you think he might use the opportunity to feature Lager Bielka? Um, instead of Liam Scales, is it, is it time to do that? And Carter Vickers obviously is, I suppose he's 50-50 to an extent. I think he's going to come back in from injury, Paddy, and I certainly hope he does. But do you think he might mix it up with Lager Bielka? Um, I think why not? I think why not? I think that, you know, that red card will play in Lager Bielka's head from that, that game in, in Rotterdam. And I think that he, uh, he'll see the, he'll see the, the silliness of it. He'll also feel a little bit aggrieved about it as well. I think it was a poor decision, but he shouldn't have gotten himself caught up in those situations. If we are going to get these guys in here and we need them to see what level they're playing at, experience a, 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 well, an almost full self to park with, with that, that atmosphere, there's no better game to try that than, than a game that is, is, you know, yeah, it's worth something for us, but it's... It's a dead rubber. I think we, we get him in, we give him a we give him a go and, and, and let him experience what, what it's all about. Um I tell you something, the confidence that we give the guy if we're going to get a victory tomorrow. Yeah. And he's part yeah, of that. There, there is, I mean, I'm contradicting myself because as much as I've used and continue to use this term dead rubber, there has got to be value in a game like this. You're up against quality opposition, it's the top level of European football. Yes, competitively, but you know, we're out the tournament again, but there's got to be lessons to be learned for guys like a Lager Bielka or, or anyone else who finds himself in the in the start of 11 or even featuring off the bench. I think there is value in that. And as a coach, Brendan Rodgers will see the value in that as much as fans are frustrated that, you know, effectively we're playing for nothing. But yeah, there, there's certainly plenty to be gained from, from players getting that experience. So if he goes with Carter Vickers and Lager Bielka, um, does he stick with Alistair Johnson and Greg Taylor? There's no alternative to Greg Taylor, is there? So it's, it's kind of no, got to be. No, and I think he may, he may be rewards Ralston just for just getting a bit of some time on the park. I wouldn't be surprised if Tony Ralston uh, maybe mm -hmm. gets the nod tomorrow. Um, actually, do you know I, I think he, he might go scales Lager Welker tomorrow. I've just got a feeling that he'll keep Carter Vickers maybe out of the firing line. Um, uh -huh. 
just for the mental side of things going into it this weekend and just keep man fresh for the running that we've got. I wouldn't be surprised if we see scales lag a bell. Yeah. Um, you might have heard the stat doing the rounds yesterday. I think it was Hamish that put the stat out on a tweet about Celtic have lost five games domestically since the start of last season and in all five, Carter Vickers has been missing. And it tells you just so much. You know, sometimes stats can paint a false impression, paper, paper over the cracks. I think it just tells you exactly where we're at when Carter Vickers isn't playing. Um, but you may be careful with him if he's carrying an injury. Listen, Wednesday's got, you know, some importance, as we've discussed. Saturday against Hearts is huge. And if it means resting Carter Vickers to make sure he's okay for Saturday, then that's probably the right move, isn't it? So we'll see what he decides there. Um, I notice you've not mentioned Nat Phillips, um, a guy who certainly made the headlines on Sunday for, for all the wrong reasons. Um, I've been invited on to a, a Liverpool podcast later on this afternoon from a fellow who wants to discuss the potential of them recalling Nat Phillips because they've got some injury wish, issues of their own. I'd love to tell him better news, but, but it's not going to be a glowing report. And it's, it doesn't bring you any joy in, in saying that because the guy's representing Celtic and, and I'm sure he's given his best, but like maybe several of his teammates at this moment in time, he's woefully short of confidence yeah. and that that bore out in everything that he'd done on Sunday. He started the game reasonably well and as time got passed, it got worse and worse and worse. By the end of it, he was a shell of a man. He, he, yeah. he looked all at sea and the camera panned him a few times and as I said, it doesn't feel great to be talking about a guy like that, um, but he can't, he can't feature again for Celtic, Paddy. I just don't think there's any value to, to doing so. No, I, I think um, the pressure's different up here than it is down, down south, in my opinion. I think uh, it, it means so much more to our fans in terms of we can't afford to slip up. Um, I'm not saying that Liverpool can as well, but I think that it's more more uh, acceptable for their fans that they're playing in such a, a higher standard of the league, whereas the expectation up here in Scotland is that you win every game. So I think he's 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 felt that. Would I be surprised if he goes down and starts playing for Liverpool? No, I probably wouldn't, to be honest. I think uh, I think we we've seen a player that's you know came up with a little bit of expectation. I think that the chat has been that he's not he's not featured an awful lot for Liverpool, and I think that that is <clears throat> is so so clear. Um, he's not had enough experience in football. I think he's been around all the good players. I think he must show something in training. Absolutely. But you can just tell he's not he's not played enough football in his life, um, yeah. and, and unfortunately, we are we are the ones that have taken the risk on that uh, last minute decision, and it's not paid off. No, it's not, and and that's the way those kind of moves can go. It, it was you know, it's been billed officially as an emergency loan, and emergency signings are always going to carry a risk. If you're having to pick up somebody at short notice, it can go one or two ways, generally speaking, and unfortunately for Celtic and. For Nat Phillips, it's gone the other way. He's 26 years of age. I think he joined Liverpool's academy via Bolton slash Huddersfield as a, as a kid at around about 17. He's been at a top club amongst a top manager and top players for such a long time. But he, I, for the life of me, I can't work out how he's still officially a Liverpool player. With, with every respect, he's not at that level. He really isn't. And yeah, let's not dwell on it. But he shouldn't go in again tomorrow night. And it would show a real arrogance, I think, if Brendan Rodgers continued with him. He's got to see what everyone else has seen in this case. And Take the guy out the fire line. Get into the yeah, midfield, Paddy. Um, I'll give you my three and you can tell me if, if you go with it. You know what I'm saying there about Awata. I think Awata should remain in the six with Callum McGregor more advanced and Matt O'Reilly alongside him. What's your, your thoughts on that? I would agree, but I actually think you'll, I, I'd say more advanced for McGregor, but I, I think the, the, the two of them will hold. McGregor and Awata? Aye, aye. Okay. I think, that's, I think he's going to have to start home with that going forward, to be honest, because I don't see McGregor having the legs as what he used to under under Brendan Rodgers. Yeah. So. Known in the game as a double pivot, as Miff likes to remind us, so McGregor and Nawata sitting in there. I speculated that it might actually be a good opportunity to rest Callum McGregor. You know, you, you, you really get a chance to properly rest him with, with nothing at stake. But again, he's a club captain, and actually, when you've had a result like Sunday and you're needing a reaction... Probably can't take your skipper out, so I, I think he needs to play, and I think he will play as he, you know, more often than not, always does. Um, so I want McGregor and O'Reilly, and then up top pff, again. It's remember for a time you used to just say, Do you know what? It's going to be uh Jota, Abada, and Kyogo, and, and it was dead straightforward, and you knew it was a, a stick on. Less so just now, we've got the, the mystery of Celtic's wingers between 
Mikey Johnson, James Forrest, Yang, Louis Palma, uh, Marco Tilly obviously doesn't make the squad as well. Another new signing that, that misses out. Um, and then you've got Kyogo and O kind of vying for, for the number nine slot. What kind of front three do you think we're going to see, Paddy? I think we'll, we'll see Palma. Um, I think he really likes playing in this, this competition. I think he really wants to kind of put a bit of a, a stamp on it. Um, on, on, well, sorry, put a bit of a mark on it, to be honest. I think he knows it's a, probably a, a window for a stepping stone down the line. Um, and Kyogo for me, we'll get the nod as well, just with O getting the, the minutes on, on Sunday. I have to say, I think, you know, he's, he's really impressed me lately. I think uh, <clears throat> he knows he's got bits of his game that he needs to work on. And, I, and you mentioned it in the, the pre-show on Friday as well. Um, he, he's very humble about it all. I think he, he <clears throat> realises he's not the finished article, nowhere near it yet. But I actually don't think his performance was that bad. Again, I think he was the the, the pride of service, um, which we're all talking about with Kyogo. I think obviously the chance with Mikey Johnson. I think that he, he needs to score that. He needs to he needs to bury that. But again, this is yeah. this rawness that's that's coming in as well. And whether he's tried to take it with his right or whether he could have taken it with his left, he, he, he still needs to score that that chance. But I have to say that I've, I've really really enjoyed seeing him. Try and take an opportunity here, and and as much as I wouldn't mind them kind of starting tomorrow night, eh, sorry on Wednesday night, um, ah tomorrow, sorry, um, <laughs> I, I I think you'll go with Kyogo. I think uh, just that little bit more experience. He's got some goals in the Champions League already, and he's he's just our, our best striker. So I can see it, that. It's the bottom line, isn't it? And we had a chat on the show last night about inverted commas the Kyogo question. And it's a bigger picture question about the, the very fact that, as you touched on at the start of this show, Paddy, he is one of the best strikers we've seen at Celtic Park in such a long time, and we are not getting the best out of him at this moment. But he's shown and he's proven this season uh, against Lazio and Atletico already at Celtic Park that he can score on the big occasion, if given the service. Uh, and I think he can do so again tomorrow night, absolutely. So I'd agree with you. It's got to be Kyogo leading the line. Uh, it leaves one gap in the team. It leaves the right winger. Is it James Forrest? Is it Mikey Johnson? Is it Yang? I don't know. I don't know either. I don't, I don't know. know either. I'm um, shocked in that position. Yeah. And you, you could toss a coin over any of them. And Brendan Rodgers might say, well, I'm going to go with James Forrest and point back to the board and say, this is where we're at. Unless you back me, we're going to have to continue making these kind of moves. Yeah. Yang looked... Yang looked, um, for me, a wee bit afraid of the, the challenge on Sunday. I know he took a shoulder knock. I wonder but, if he played on it a bit. He just looked not interested at that moment in time. And Mikey continues to be good in flashes and then selling himself short at other times. So who knows? Um, I'll pin you to somebody, Paddy. Who do you think it's most likely to be? Um, Mikey Johnson. Mikey Johnson. So just to recap yeah. then, uh, <laughs> and as I say, I'll, I'll give you some bonus points if you get this one right. So Joe Hart and goals. Back four of Ralston, Scales, Lager, Bielka and Taylor. Midfield three, Iwata, McGregor, O'Reilly. And up top, Kyogo through the middle, Louis Palmer left and Mikey Johnson right. So we'll see how that goes. Don't really want to spend too much time, if anything, on Feyenoord here, Paddy. Um, they can only finish in third place, so they're guaranteed Europa League, but no Champions League progression for them. We've seen them up close and personal on match day one. Celtic obviously lost out. 2-0 on the night, down to nine men as we know. Uh, Thiago Home and Lager, Bielka getting the red cards. I said at the time, done the post-match that night, and I was adamant, you know, I said Celtic will beat them at Celtic Park, I'm sure of it. Now, at that time, I was obviously hoping that we still had something to play for, so the motivations have changed. But I do still think, you know, bizarrely, as Celtic season has become, we're so up and down and hard to predict. There's, there's every chance Celtic can go and put in a really solid performance and win tomorrow night, but could equally go yeah. the complete opposite direction so it's a real tough one to call but I'll ask you to do so how do you see it going and what kind of scoreline are you going for I think it'll be high scoring I think they'll be pretty similar I think few few players will be rested um, they know there's a bit of a dead rubber for them well it is a dead rubber for them as well uh, I think 3-2 Celtic 3-2 I think it'll be quite similar to that Betis game that I, I was talking about uh, a couple of years ago just two teams going at it yeah I'm usually one for Letting the heart rule ahead, as, as Miff keeps reminding me. But I think uh, 
I think there certainly could be goals in it, as you've suggested. And just the fact that we're, just, we're a wee bit short of confidence at this moment in time, I wonder if we have some moments in the game but just fail to, to get that win that's been eluding us for so long now, Champions League. I'm going to go to each party. Um, and it's not like me to generally tip Celtic for a draw, but I think that's what it we'll might be. We'll go for the win, you know, come on. I know. Um, anyways, I said, obviously, kind of a lot covered there, Paddy, and there's, there's debates that are going to range, range, rage on between now and kickoff. Uh, we've obviously got this Harps game coming up on Saturday, which is a further consideration for Brendan Rodgers and for the players. But for now, Paddy, your final comments on this one as we start to wrap up. Listen, as I, I said earlier on, I know it's not great at the moment. It's not, uh, it's not been good viewing. I think there is a lack of consistency uh, within this start my living and <coughs> pardon me, within the team as a whole, to be honest. Um, but I do think we've still got a better squad than anyone in this league. And I think that we, if we get players back, I think January coming is going to be good for us, albeit we may lose some players to the Asian Cup. I do see the hope that we're going to get players in very, very quickly. Um, we're going into a spell with no European football after Christmas. We need to use that to our advantage now. Um, and we need to make sure that we're, we're capitalising in, in, in every single game um, and make maximum use of this squad because it's it's going to be difficult for us if we keep tinkering about with what we're doing. It's going to be really difficult for us to, to really kick on this season. Um, I think we, we need to get that settled and I would rather try and get an even settled 11 before the end of this uh, this break in terms of who we're starting and then you can say right who's gonna who's gonna push me through for the rest of the season and who do i need to replace and i think he knows already who he needs to replace i really do i just think we need to get players out the door that aren't going to do anything for us and we need to do that first i don't think we'll sign much in the first week i think we'll, we'll, we'll have to get rid of players first yeah and i think we've all agreed now just how important the January window is going to be this time around. I think the main thing, Paddy, is that we see a, a reaction, an immediate reaction to what was yeah. a, a really poor Celtic performance on Sunday and no better time than the Champions League to do so. So fingers crossed for a big result. Paddy, thanks for joining us here on this one. Uh, thanks, of course, to everyone at home listening. Uh, we hope you can enjoy the game. Hopefully Celtic give us something to cheer about. We'll be back, as always, with the final whistle show shortly after. But in the meantime, as best as you can, enjoy the game. <laughs>